Hallelujah. Can we hear the people of God open up their mouth and give their God some praise this afternoon? He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I know that you've been well fed. I know that you've received some rich word. But I want you to make room for more by opening up your mouth and release a praise. I want you to know that you have a unique voice print that nobody else can praise like you can praise because you know what the Lord has done for you. And you see, there is a release of your testimony in your praise that makes the enemy has to back off because he knows what he has tried, but you are still in the house of God on a Saturday afternoon giving your God praise. So I want you to open up your mouth, young people. Remember what the Lord has done. Remember where he has taken you from. I know it's a Saturday afternoon, but open Open up your mouth because he's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah! 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 He's worthy. You maybe weren't expecting this, but he's worthy. some of you were born I used to come to Birmingham all the way from London to rave around this local area Soho Road I have a friend my best friend that just lived down the corner and I used to come up here to rave not knowing that God would one day come in the mock run me down chase me down the sin that I was in, although he's a holy God, was not too much for him to come after me. I wasn't looking for God, but God was certainly looking for me. And so every opportunity I get, especially when I come to Birmingham, I have to open my mouth and lift the roof off with a praise. Because the enemy thought he had me good and proper. The enemy had already written my death certificate. But thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the blood speaks better things. Is there anyone here this afternoon with a testimony that knows that it's not your mother, it's not your father, it's not those that wish you well, it's not those that hate you, it is because of Jesus why you're here this afternoon do i hear a praise in the house in gratitude for all that he has done can you open your mouth one more time and just give him a shout of praise hallelujah hallelujah he's worthy he's worthy we honor you today lord we magnify your name we exalt you hallelujah there is For some of the things we have actually done, we don't deserve to be alive. But because of your grace, your grace and your mercy has brought us through. You're a reliable God. 
You're a faithful God. You're a delivering God. You are a wonderful God. And we honor you with our life. I thank you for your sons and your daughters that Father God, you've brought here to hear from you over this weekend. We know that you who have started is well able to complete. And we thank you for the visionary Lord, the one that had to be processed to reach this far. Continue to cover him, continue to lead him, continue to guide him, continue to show him, continue to process him until he looks like his big brother Jesus to you be all the glory in Jesus name amen and amen and amen you may take your seat I don't know how much time I have and you know me how much time do I have sir 10 minutes 15 Ooh. 50, oh, that's better. <laughs> 15, wow. We give God praise. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord to all the dignitaries and every one of you, men and women of the Most High God. My name is Enid Stewart, and I um, uh, was birthed in Rurat Ministries under Bishop John Francis, and I am glad to be in the house of the Lord. I, found, I count it a privilege to be standing before kings and queens of the most high God. You are, uh, of, uh, uh, I don't know if you know how valuable you are to God, um, how much God is leaning in your direction and smiling and saying, there goes my son, there goes my daughter, irrespective of the issues that you are going through. You see, he knows your end from your beginning and so uh, for some of you, it could even be that God has recommended you while you're going through what you're going through. You might say, well, I, I didn't want my life to be like this. I didn't ask for this, but, you know, just hold on a while. Your latter will be greater to the glory of God. I don't want to take too long. I have been given the responsibility to minister on the fivefold ministry and spiritual gifts. The time given to me is much shorter than the subject uh, it's a huge subject and I've been uh, thinking about this praying about this seeking the Lord wanting to know what to say uh, to his people and uh, I trust you will be uh, strengthened in your inner man as I just speak to you for a while on this subject that I've been given uh, I really wanted to ask God what to talk about in terms of this subject rather than just come and tell you um, what I've heard somebody say. I really wanted to hear from God because I know the word that keeps being used is assignment. And I know in the teaching arena, if a teacher is teaching, they're teaching the, the students or lecturing because they know they're preparing the individual. Um, if it's a, a law seminar or a lecture, they're not going to teach you um, to the medical field. They're not going to teach you the medical sciences because it wouldn't be appropriate for what you're doing. So I am mindful that you are on assignment by God. I'm mindful that God wants you to hear his heart. Um, last night, I saw chains on the platform here, and I'm mindful that God um, has mandated every individual to... Uh, to speak a word that will release you and propel you into your future and your destiny. So uh, with that, let's see if we can go. I just took out my glasses to use and I find that it's broken. So that means that I'm going to be given supernatural eyesight. Uh, bless God. Speaking of the fivefold ministry... Uh, bless you, man of God. It's, I've been um, taught manners, so I have to respect um, dignitaries in their respective places. God bless you, anyone else who's in the house that I don't know personally, but are 
men and women of God in the body of Christ. Okay, speaking of the fivefold ministry and spiritual gifts, uh, we're looking in particular at what the Bible has to say. When we're looking at the, what the Bible has to say, we're looking at what God had in mind uh, when God uh, spoke through his uh, Holy Spirit through various individuals that wrote the scriptures. There are a number of uh, uh, passages of scripture that deals with uh, spiritual gifts. Ephesians 4, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12 um, to 14 actually. And also 1 Peter 4, verse 10. I want to try and read from the Living Bible, um, Ephesians 4, because I believe it really sort of put it in everyday language, uh, what we're dealing with here regarding spiritual gifts and the fivefold ministry. Now, let me put it here, see if I can see it. Can I get somebody to read it for me? Minister Sonia. Please, you're going to be my spiritual eyesight because the lights are bright. Ephesians 4 for me, please. The psalmist tells, uh, tells about this, for he says that when Christ returned triumphantly to heaven after his resurrection and victory over Satan, he gave generous gifts to men. Notice that it says, he returned to heaven. This means that he had first come down from the heights of heaven, far down to the lowest parts of the earth. The same one who came down is the one who went back up, that he might fill all things everywhere with himself, from the very lowest to the very highest. Some of us have been given special ability as apostles. To others, he has given the gift of being able to preach well. Some have special ability in winning people to Christ, helping them to trust him as their savior. Still, others have a gift for caring for God's people as a shepherd does his sheep, leading and teaching them in the ways of God. Why is it that he gives us these special abilities to do certain things best? It is that God's people will be equipped to do better work for him, building up the church and the body of Christ to a position of strength and maturity until finally we all believe alike about our salvation and about our savior, God's son. And all become full grown in the Lord. Yes, to the point of being filled full with Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. I just wanted the living Bible because I believe it's a bit clearer dealing with the, uh, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the, the pastor, the teacher. Um, that's the fivefold ministry referred to, referred to as the fivefold ministry. We also have 1 Corinthians 12, which I don't have time to read, and 1 uh, Peter chapter 4, uh, verse 10. Now, I'm going to give you that for the sake of time that you could read in your own time, because there is quite a bit that I would like to uh, go through. Now, let me give you some general information about uh, the gifts. Um, I just want to do something uh, very quickly. The first thing I'd like to uh, point out, um, based on 1 Peter 4 and verse 10, that every born-again believer has at least one spiritual gift. Every born-again believer has at least one spiritual gift. Uh, also, this is just general information, no individual has all the gifts. I'm going to highlight the gifts in a moment, but no, none, no one in particular, no matter how great the anointing, no matter how much you see they're able to blow on people and they, the whole row, the whole church fall out, no one individual has all the gifts. 
The other thing to be mindful of is that you and I cannot choose the gifts that we have. It's God's prerogative. He gives as he chooses. It is his gifts and therefore he gives as he wills. And 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7 to 11 uh, refers to this. Your spiritual gifts indicates indicates it's not the only thing that indicates but it does indicate God's calling and his purpose for your life so it's important to discover the gifts that's within you because it does give you some indication of what God has called you to do uh, the other thing that you need to realize, and I'm summarizing, uh, we could go through and, and give you scripture after scripture to support this, is that however your gift, if it's not used with love, does not accomplish God's intended purpose. 1 Corinthians 13 is used most of the time when we go to weddings. That's when we hear about love that's kind and love that's not puffed up. But it wasn't uh, put in the Bible to be ministered at a wedding. It's actually uh, right in the midst of 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. That's actually speaking of gifts and speaking of how the body uh, jointly fit together, how we are to operate together, complementing one another with our spiritual gifts our gifts are for the common good and it's to build up the body of Christ now I want to just pause here and minister Jackie and minister Claudine I want you to take your position I just want to do a quick illustration there are several gifts that's ministered um, in scripture mentioned in scripture and uh, you will find that scholars have put them into various groups um, in one uh, form or another. I don't know how much you love to study. Um, there are uh, two ministers here from Rurat Ministries who have got some gift bags in their hands. And um, uh, Pastor Mark warned me about this, so I'm going to ask you, the Bible says, let everything be done in decency and in order. If you would like a gift, you may come and receive one from one of these young lady. <laughs> don't Everything must be done in decency and in order. Just give them one, Minister Claudine, just one each. It's finished? Oh. Clap your hands and give God praise. How do those of you who've received your gifts, how do you feel about getting something that you didn't expect to get? Blessed. Blessed. Amen. Now, I'm not God, so I don't have uh, gifts for everyone. But I wanted to give an illustration of how it feels to be given something that you don't deserve or you didn't expect. Now, what's in the bag is just a token gesture. I went around uh, Ruach and I asked uh, for some of uh, Pastor Penny's messages and Bishop Francis' messages and some that Pastor Mark has, has ministered and some of the youth um, uh, CD that they did last year at their conference. So I trust that you'll be blessed by what you received. I wanted to just do a quick illustration of how when we know that something has been given freely, when we know that we don't have to pay for it, and even more excited when we don't know what it is, but we think it's of some value, that we're eager to get it. Now, for those of you who didn't get, because I didn't have enough for everyone, I want you to know that uh, you're, you're not out of the picture because God has invested in you. It's not just what God could afford. Because God is God, you have a gift on the inside of you that you need to develop, that you need to actually f discover first of all and then develop to the glory of God. Every single born again believer has a, uh, the Bible calls it a treasure that is in earthen vessel. You have gifts that will blow your own mind now the bible tells us i gave you the scriptures uh, i want to start with ephesians it tells us 
um, what it, about the fivefold, what is referred to as uh, the fivefold ministry, and uh, how I've seen it in various reference materials as I was studying. This fivefold ministry is referred to, um, the hand is used as a diagram to try and point out um, how this, these fivefold gifts work. Uh, the, prof, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. They're given for the perfecting of the saints. That is the adjusting and equipping of the saints. That's you. Bringing of the saints into the work of the ministry. That is bringing the saints into the ministry. They, that they function. That they're able to function and they find their place in the body of Christ. And the edifying or building up of the members of the body. So that's what the fivefold gift is given for. Most studies, as I said, points to the hand. And uh, they use the hand to kind of point out the, the function, so to speak. They refer to the apostle as the thumb. The, post, the apostle as the governing, the authority of God. Not the only one, but the apostle as a gift to the body of Christ. This is referred to as the fivefold ministry, the leadership gift, if you will. Um, the building up of the house of God, the planting of churches. That's the thumb, a very powerful member of your hand. If your thumb is injured, if your thumb is damaged, or if you lose your thumb, you will find that your hands are restricted in its ability to be used. The prophet they, they, it's referred to as the index finger. What do you do when you're pointing? If you wanted somebody, if I was to call to one of the ushers, I wouldn't use my little finger, I wouldn't use my thumb, but I would use my index finger. And that's referred to as the prophet, the one who guides. Um, when, how many of you have remember your parents used to say, listen to me, and they always use this finger. It's the one that points. It's uh, the guiding, the prophet guides, uh, the one who receives communication from God pointing out darkness pointing out error and also pointing to the truth of the word of God the truth which is the spirit of God the prophet re releases of spiritual gifts um, that's the function in the, the of the for the prophetic I'm just summarizing uh, then we have the evangelist. It's the longest finger uh, on our hands. The evangelist gathers so the the apostle governs the prophet guides and the evangelist gathers gather people into the kingdom of God into the sheepfold they are the ones that they're not the only ones but they're called specifically to bring in thereby enlarging the kingdom so they go out and they 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 are the one who do the recruiting of the lost I suppose the lost sheep they're the ones who catch spread the net and catch many fish by the gospel of Jesus Christ, by the gospel um, that is able to set people free. So that's the evangelist, the one that reaches out the longest finger. And then the pastor. And I love this symbol that I found because that's the, the wedding finger. And the pastor um, is the one that has a covenant of loyalty, feeds and care for the flock, the sheep, the lamb of God, the shepherd, they shepherd the people of God, uh, they look after, they guard the people of God. So the evangelist might be more, um, you know, in tune with going and bringing the people in and uh, the pastor is there to guard them, to deal with, uh, in a relationship of covenant, to look after the fold, look after the people of God. The pastor along with the teacher cares for those who are within. The teacher is the smallest finger and that's the one that deals with the grounding of the people. Once they've come in and they start to be taught, to be shepherd, to be discipled, then you have the grounding by the word of God, building up the individual's character, building your character and my character as we hear the word of God, as the word of God is broken down so that we can understand. It's the easiest finger to put in your ears. If your ear is itching you, it's the easiest finger to put in your ears. Your thumb is too big, all the others are too big. But this little finger is the one that's able to go into your ears. And the word teaches us that um, it's the word that builds our faith. And the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. 
So that's the fivefold ministry. And I want us to be clear because Jesus clearly states in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18 that he is building his church. No matter what names we see, no matter what we see on television, no matter we see um, a lot of, I would say, foolishness that's going on, it's Christ that's building his church. And the Bible says the gate of hell will not prevail against it. So we see here in dealing with gifts that Christ is building his church. As he ascended, he gave gifts. These are individuals that are gifts to the body of Christ. Uh, the fivefold gift that's there to strengthen, to build up, to equip the body of Christ, to the perfecting of the saints, to, uh, for them to adjust. Um, we always say you cannot scale the fish before you catch it. So what you do, you come in as you are, but you don't stay as you are because the word is supposed to convict us. The word is supposed to cleanse us. The word is supposed to let us know that that's too short, that's too tight, uh, that's, that behavior is no longer conducive. We are now born again. We have to forget the things that are behind and press towards the mark. So that's what the word does. That's what the, the gift of the fivefold is supposed to do, which is to equip the believer. So we have uh, these individuals equipped by the Holy Spirit, used by the Holy Spirit to build us up, to build you up in your most holy faith so that you in turn can be perfected, can be equipped by ministering to you, by ministering to us. What starts to happen is that doubt and unbelief, it starts to be removed from our eyes, removed from our hearts. What the, the lies that the enemy tells us because of what we have gone through and the issues that we have had to endure and things that's happened to us by hearing the word we start to be strengthened we're not no longer going to and fro but now we start to be strengthened in our inner man so we can start to believe who God says we are we don't go by the labels of the past anymore I used to be called a good for nothing bad breed so and so because of uh, what my mother thought about my father and so that was the word I heard all along. But when I got saved, God started to show me that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I, the word of God started to um, break down those words that were spoken over my life that kept me in depression, kept me isolated, kept me weak and insecure for so many years. The word as I started, as the fivefold ministry ministered in the body, you start to grow, you start to be strengthened. And this is what um, the mandate of this weekend is about. It's about hearing the word. It's about hearing that the past can't, don't have to hold you back anymore. It's about hearing that the horrendous things that you might have gone through does not have the power to define your future. And so as doubt and unbelief is removed from our out our hearts and our eyes insecurity and insignificance starts to fall away and our confidence in Christ start to take we start to grow we start to want to the discover who we are through the word through sound teaching as we become grounded we start to want to do that which God the visions and the dreams that God put in your heart it's not to frustrate you yes as a young person you've got a lot of zeal and you know we we are in a society that likes everything instant but God is still a God of process and so the dreams and the visions that's on the inside of you it's not to frustrate you God has given you that to anchor you as he process you taking you to that place of manifestation do I hear an amen anyhow so this is what is called growing and maturing in the body of Christ. Growth is not a new shout in the church. Growth is not a new tongue in the church. Growth is not larger numbers of a congregation. Growth is what I choose to believe. Um, Psalm 1. Um, gives an example talks about you no longer walk in the counsel of the ungodly you don't stand in the way of sinner your delight is in the word of God and the Bible talks about being planted he shall be like a tree that's planted uh, one of the things we need to recognize is that you need to know that you can't plant yourself young people 
You can't plant yourself. Planting uh, happens by the divine gardener. That's God himself. Uh, this is how God explained it to me when I became saved. He showed me that every local church, every local church that's built upon Jesus Christ has a particular soil, just using it for uh, symbolically and practically sake so that we can understand. And God knows... Uh, the, the fish or the, in, the will of God, God knows the tree that you are and he knows the fruit that you are to bear. And so he plants you in that soil because you need that soil to grow. Let me give you an example. Uh, I come from Jamaica. I come from a tropical country. Now there's certain things that grows in a tropical climate that will not grow in the climate of the UK because uh, uh, the climate is not conducive to that tree bearing fruit. And so why am I saying this? Because so many of us don't quite understand uh, the, the whole matter of what's going on in our lives. Some of us have gone through some things in church and we take up ourselves and we start going church shopping we start shopping for church we have our list um, it'd be great if we could get two for one and we don't recognize that you can't plant yourself because Jesus says he is building his church and so the man the Bible talks about the blessed man that's planted he's planted why by the rivers so that he can bring forth fruit in his season and so because of the gift that's on the inside of you God will plant you somewhere that sometimes you won't understand what's happening now I'm not talking about staying in an abusive place I'm not talking about staying in somewhere that is is not you know synchronized with the will of God I'm talking about aligning with the will of God and sometimes we don't understand God has to reveal why we're in the place that we are in so the blessed man is like a tree that's planted by the rivers of waters his roots his roots go deep down so that he can be nurtured likewise because of the gift that's on the inside of you you have to be planted your roots has to go deep down so that you can be watered you can be watered by the holy spirit because there's much on the inside the dreams the visions the things that you see yourself doing you have to be planted you can't just run and and do it tomorrow there is a process that you have to go through if that gift is going to glorify God there is a process that you have to go through if you have no root you cannot survive and if you have no root you certainly will bear no fruit what do I mean by to be planted to be submitted it's a curse word for most people it's a curse word it's a swear word for the more free-spirited or the lone ranger. And sometimes the truth is, some people have submitted and has been abused. Verbally, mentally, emotionally, sexually. And so it's, it's something that people don't want to hear because some people have done it. And people have overstepped boundaries. And what I would suggest, and I've seen it throughout the tone of the whole of this weekend, is that you need to ask God to direct you to a godly man or a woman that can minister to you to bring healing. Um, I don't believe in keeping secrets with the enemy. And sometimes that keeps you bound, like the chains that we're talking about. It keeps you from walking in your destiny. That's when the enemy start to keep fellowship with you, start to tell you might as well you walk away when God wants to minister to you and bring wholeness and healing in the name of Jesus. So you need to understand that you're gifted. You need to know that you need to be planted. You need to be planted so that you can grow. You need to be like the blessed man that's by the tree. The Bible says that his leaf shall not wither. That means you'll go through your season, but you won't wither up and die. We have the autumn seasons where the tree look like they're dead. But come spring, you see leaves flourishing. So there are times that you might look like you're not functioning. Nothing is happening. That's a season that you 
you're going through. Ecclesiastes 3 says there is a time and a season. There is a purpose for everything. You have to ensure that you're planted. And I heard a uh, pastor spoke about having a mentor. It's good to have somebody that is um, able to mentor you. So when you're going through a season of frustration or you want to move on or this is just a long thing you can speak to somebody who's more seasoned who has your best interest at heart who wants to see the godly characters uh, in you develop and the godly fruits in you develop that they can hold your hand and take you through the process the other thing i want you to know is that you never see a tree decide to uproot itself because well i don't i don't want to be an orange tree i don't know why them call me to be an orange. I don't want to bear orange. I want to bear apples. The tree doesn't have a choice in what kind of tree it is. Likewise, you and I, I, don't, I didn't have a choice in being called to teach. God decided to gift me with the gift and it's still being developed. So what am I saying is that you, ca you can't uproot yourself. As a matter of fact, I've seen so many people who are trying to plant themselves in this ministry. I like the music. I like the praise and worship. Yeah, and the, I like the way the pastor preached. So I'm going to stay here. But the truth is you can't plant yourself because your roots are damaged. So every time you try to keep, go down too deep, it's like, ouch. This hurts. Ouch. That one is not talking to me. Ouch. You can't settle because your roots are damaged. And so I want to encourage you that you're gifted. Some of you might be in here today. You're gifted, but your roots are damaged because you might have uprooted yourself or something might have happened in your life that has uprooted you and you can't. You know there is much that the Lord is doing, but you need to be planted. Genesis uh, tells us that every uh, when the Lord called call forth, when he said, let there be, uh, every, what he said came into being. And that means that the Bible says that every tree brought forth fruit and within the fruit was seed and the seed had a seed within itself. What am I saying? That that's an analogy for what's inside of you. That God has planted a seed on the inside of you in the form of your gift and your calling. And that uh, as you stay planted, you will be able to develop that seed and bring forth fruit to his glory. We have to be careful. I have to say this because the Lord's been really speaking to me about this. We have to be careful about the spirit of rebellion. Because the spirit of rebellion camouflages itself and look like a new thing. And everybody is after a new thing. And God said, I will do a new thing, but it's not a new thing to God. It's only a new thing to us. Because we have not seen it before. But Solomon, whose credit is as the wisest man who ever lived, says there is nothing new under the sun. Have you ever heard your parents say, I, I was your age once? My mother used to say to me, if I was big like this when my mother had me, I would have killed her. Which meant, means that she grew up. She knew all the mischief. She knew all the things as a young person. And yes, technology has gone to the place. Now, I, I, I really don't understand it. I have to confess, I really don't understand it. But technology has gone to the place where the young people can you know, outsmart in terms of technology, the older people. But you still need the older people. You still need the old to be able to show you the way. Sometimes you're so, you're young and you're eager, but you don't know. The road looks straight to you, but the older person who was young once and thought they could go down the road didn't know that the road had a dip. And so they went crashing ahead. And so when they're saying to you, no, slow down a bit, slow down, especially, I'm speaking about those that wish you well. I'm not talking about those who want to restrain you, those who want to limit you. I'm talking about those who have your best interests at heart, those who are godly counselors. Saying, hold on a while. It looks clear, but it's a dead end. Calm yourself down. Wait on God. We have to be mindful because the, big, the, 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 in, in the original re, uh, uh, spirit that rebel is Satan himself. And he's always camouflaging and he's coming after the young because he knows that God has invested so much in you. So be mindful of that. For you to grow, it's the age old process, 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 process. 
Now, I spoke about the fivefold ministry, ministering, building us up in our most holy faith. You see, as we start to receive the word, we start to line up. We start to synchronize with heaven. The Bible says, as it is in heaven, so it will be here on earth. As uh, God has mandated in heaven, as we start to receive the word and start to grab hold after the word of God and start to go hard after God, we're lining up with the will of God for our lives. Ezekiel saw it he saw bones coming together it was a valley of dry bone and God asking can these bones live and I'm here to tell you that it might look like it's dry it might look like it's dead the Bible says that when Lazarus dead it was four days before Jesus came and when Jesus came his sisters was upset and Jesus said take me to the place and your situation might be like a Lazarus situation. It might be dead and stinking dead. But Jesus has the power to resurrect it. And as a matter of fact, some things have to go through the death process so that it can be risen in the resurrected power of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring him glory. And so the enemy has lied to many of us because it looks like death. It smells like death. It looks like nothing good can come from this. But if you keep on keeping on, keep on holding on, believing that God is not through with you yet and there is something that God has placed on the inside, you will see with your very eyes what the Lord is able to do. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Let God boast on you. Let God show that he can do exceedingly abundantly above all. So the fivefold gift operates to the glory of God for the believer to start realizing I'm fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. I am the apple of his eye. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me, I have the power to condemn it. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me. He has given me power. To tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing will by any means harm me. Greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in the world. As you start to receive the words of truth. You recognize that there are more for you. Than those who are against you. You recognize that it's not you that live. But the Christ that liveth in you and therefore you will not fret because of evildoers because they will soon be cut off this is the word of God this is the word of God that as we continue to hear it perfects us it equips us it starts us to get into the place where we start to discover our spiritual gifts that is within us and this is mentioned in Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12 as the born again believer, you start to realize that you are written in the volume of the book, like David said, that you have been gifted to. Romans 12, 12, these and 1 Corinthians are referred to as the motivational gift. These are what influences you to do what you want to do. Have you met some people that no matter what you go and say to them, they say, you know, let's pray about it. And you don't know that they're gifted. They might not even know that they're gifted for intercession. And he said, Child, all, all, all the time you talk to them, no matter what you're talking to them about, all they want to do is pray about it. Or you meet somebody else, all they want to do is study, study, study. Everything, every problem, let's look in the word of God. Everything you go to them. And sometimes you hear people say, we just practically don't have to get so deep. But that's because that's the teacher in them. Because that's the gift motivates you. The gift influences you. The gift that you have on the inside of you give you a particular perspective. If you have a gift of compassion, you find that you're watching television and you see something heartbroken and the next minute you're, you're burdened down, in, you're crying, you're praying, you have the gift of compassion, mercy. You're praying, you're trying to find a way how you can get involved or you're stirred to help. You just love to help because you have a gift to help. People say, you know, they're just using you. I don't know the reason why you're doing You're in church day and night. You have a gift. You might not have discovered the name as yet, but that's the gift that's motivating you. Gift of encouragement. You might be, when you're okay, you might not be around this person, but when you're down, you know who to go to. 
Because although they don't solve the problem, they just have a knack. They have a way of just letting you see it from a different perspective. Or just build yourself up. That's the person with the gift of encouragement. Between uh, Ephesians 4, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, between these three scriptures, every single one of you, every single one of us is mentioned in here. The gifting that's on the inside of you is in the word of God. You are written in the volume of the book. Discover your gift. Discover whom God says you are. Some of you have gone through so much. You don't know who you are. One of the main things that um, I, I do in terms of counseling is trying to help people unravel from the, the chaos of life to grab hold of who God say, say they are. The purpose of the gift is as 1 Peter 4 says, to minister to one another as good, good stewards of the manifold grace of God. As the fivefold ministry uh, leadership gift is being utilized, it equips the saints to start ministering to each other, ministering out of giving, ministering out of compassion, ministering out of encouragement, ministering a word of knowledge, ministering a word of wisdom, the ministering by faith, ministering healing, ministering the workings of miracles, ministering prophecy, discerning of spirits. We don't have to say everything that jump up in church is God. Sometimes it's a manifestation of the enemy. Discerning of spirits. Discerning of tongues. Not every tongue is from the Holy Spirit. In my younger years as a Christian, as the Lord started to sharpen my discernment, I remember being in church and I remember somebody, an older mother, speaking in tongues, said she was an intercessor. And I knew in my spirit I was new, newly saved. But I knew she weren't speaking in tongues. She just wanted to be an intercessor, babbling, babbling, babbling. And I went to Bishop and I said, Bishop, I might be out of place, but that sister is in a dangerous place because you can't play with the enemy. And you cannot use the enemy's tactics to try and overpower the enemy. Paul, I know. The enemy will ask, who are you? So, discerning of uh, different kinds of tongues, discerning of spirit and the interpretation of tongues. Again, I don't have time to go into all of these, but this is what I want to provoke you to go and find yourself in the word. We minister, we're to equip and uh, adjust, go through the process of healing ourselves and start to utilize our gift for the benefit of the body of Christ, for the benefit of the local community, to go out in the highways and the byways and to minister to those who have need. Some people are not going to get saved by coming to the altar. They're going to get saved by watching you in your workplace, in your college, in your university, along the highways and the byways. As you allow God to use you, your spiritual gifts will start to be manifested and they will know that this is not an ordinary thing. That will give you the testimony. That will be the open door for you to start to uh, explain and start to testify of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the gifts are to minister to one another as good stewards. You minister what they call in reach. You minister in the local house. Minister to each and everyone. Minister to your brothers and your sister, um, which is uh, called in reach. And then minister to those further afield, your neighbor, whether it's next door or next um, across the waters um, on another continent. That's called outreach. It's where the gift, the spiritual gifts are used for in the local house and uh, further afield. I remember once speaking to um, somebody who uh, was newly saved, was rough and ready, used to be a bad man out on the street, come in, didn't want to submit, um, was evangelizing in his own territory, but still had the bad boy tactics, but was now saying, is Jesus now our? 
you know, with a still, still not refined, still have some work to be done. And one of the things that he started to do, he was getting upset with leadership. Because as far as he was concerned, everybody else sit down in the church and he's him out there, night time with the people them, and so on and so forth. And I, 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 I recognize that his, his intentions was right, but he was immature. And the Lord started to, I said, Lord, how can I help this brother who have the right intentions, but's going about it the wrong way? And the, the analogy God gave me was a hospital accident and emergency setting. And God showed me that when there is a 999 call, it's the ambulance people that come out. And the, he gave me, the, in the context for this person, he said to me, he, the Lord showed me that he's like the ambulance crew. He go out there and he gets them in the mess. I, I watch a lot of the accident and emergency and sometimes the people are mangled. They have to cut them out. And the ambulance crew bring them to the hospital, to the, to the accident and emergency, and hand them over to the nurses and the ones who are in A&E. And they take over and they start to do all the tests to find out what is wrong. And if the person needs surgery, they hand them over to the next level of ministry. And this is what the Lord was saying to me. And what happened? You don't find, I've never seen a program where, you know, somebody in the ambulance crew coming to the accident and emergency and say, we're the one who had to be there. We're the one who had to cut them out of the car. We're the one who had to be picking. We're the one who answered the call. Where were you? To the doctors. It's a teamwork. The, if the, the ambulance crew know what they're to do, they're the ones who are equipped to go out there and the fire brigade knows what they're to do. They're the ones who are out there. They're risking their lives and they bring them and they pass them on to the one who is now equipped to deal with them on the inside. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to coordinate and work together to the glory of God. It's not a matter of, well, I am the one who is doing this and I am the one and where is the pastor and where is the this? No. Are you hearing me, people of God? So our spiritual gifts is to be used to the glory of God. And the, the, the best time or the best way that we can synchronize that is when we operate in love. We're going to get on each other's nerves if we don't try to foster and develop the fruit of love. The spiritual gift without the fruit is not going to bear any attributes towards the glory of God at all. And so it's important as I was dealing with this and we're dealing with gifts in our own church, the Lord started to show me, don't just deal with the gifts, deal with the fruit. Because you see, the gifts brings more attention, but the fruit take a long time. I don't see a conference yet entitled, Welcome to the Conference of Long Suffering. We're going to lay hands on you and you're going to suffer long. We're going to lay hands on you and you're going to be patient. I don't see the altar full. I just feel the Lord is calling me to lay hands on the patient. Lord, I want patience and I want it now. So the fruit of the spirit must be must be the fruit of the spirit has to be cultivated the gift can be discovered and can be nurtured but the fruit has to be cultivated it has to be developed and the fruit takes process i don't know if you've ever bitten into an apple and it don't taste good but it look good i don't know if you've eaten an orange i had some orange at the hotel this morning for a long time it was so sweet i went back for more some things look lovely on the outside but oh god when you taste it, it's nasty. And sad to say, some of us look lovely on the outside. We're a work in progress. We're a work in progress. The other thing I found out that the Lord showed me, and I thought it, and I'm finishing now, is that Jesus Christ is the head. And I came across... I like to investigate. I love to research. Don't always have the time. But I, I started, the Lord led me to investigate about a pregnancy. And I found out that in the development of the fetus, it is the head 
that develops first. It's the head that is formed first and then the rest of the body. And if you were to go through, even on the internet and find out, you will find out in terms of the development of the body of a baby in the womb, that's the same stage that the body of Christ, the head has developed. The head, the Jesus Christ is the head, but he's waiting for his body to come into maturity. First Corinthians, do you realize was written to a young church? The church is over 2,000 years old and we still haven't got what Paul was writing to the young Corinthians about. 2,000 years later, we still have our differences. Paul had to write to them and say, you don't eat off the food at communion table, you don't carry on like pigs. I'm summarizing. You don't get drunk at communion. He was writing to baby Christians. You know what Corinthians church represents? A church that was full of gifts but no character. A church that manifested every gift. That's the reason why we have it as a template in 2010. It was a church that was eager for gift because the Gentile came from a background where gifts operated. All manner of things that they did. And you know what? They just switch. And instead of going to the parties, they bring it to the church. So Paul had to write to bring order. So really and truly, we should be more into the maturing and the development. To the, we should be growing up to the fullness of the statue. But we're still working out the finer details of a letter that was written to a church that was just a couple of years old. We need to wake up. The head develops first, but the head is waiting for his body. We have so many people saying, come Lord Jesus, come. Come for what? For a bride that's without spot or wrinkle. Where? Okay. These gifts are divided into various sections. You have what is referred to as the spoken gifts, which is the gifts of prophecy and diverse tongues and interpretation of tongues. I never see... I have not seen such an eagerness for prophets. People, everybody want to prophesy. It's like people forget where they live. So they have to go to a prophet to prophesy to them their address so they can get home. Because if the prophet don't call you out and tell you your address, where are you going to go that night? It's like you forget where you live. And as far as you're concerned, God move. I was thinking about this and I, saw, I thought to myself, then Jesus, you mean to tell me that you came from heaven to earth to show us the way. You were mangled on the cross. You went to the depths of hell and you ascended only to prophesy my address. Is that all you're sitting at the right hand of the father waiting to do to tell me where I live? How does that edify the church? How does going to a prophetic conference and finding out that my name is Enid and I live in London, how does that bring glory to God? God don't know my name. All right, brother Seth, you know me. We have green cloth now. We have soap. We have water. Oil. Shampoo too? What you saying? Creative. All manner of things that people are saying, this is what, this is a move of God. You ever read the Old Testament? A move of God? 
a move of God, young people don't get caught up in it. Stay radical for Christ. Use your gift to his glory. He's well able to keep you. You don't have to try and fit in. Don't wear nobody else's label except Jesus and him crucified. Some of the labels that you're wearing, you know how much demonic oppression you invite into your life. Because some of these people, they're not even atheists, they're demonic worshippers. So be mindful. There is a, a force towards conformity, towards becoming one, and it's not with God. Find out who you are in Christ. Find out what God says about you. Find out the gift that he has given every single one of you. There is a gift that's on the inside of you that will blow your mind if you realize God's mind concerning you. There is also the power gift. The working of miracles, faith and healing. We're in the last days and the Bible says that there will be times when man will be able to call down fire from heaven. So we have to be careful if we are uh, showing, performing for the crowd. We have to be careful that we don't get deceived. Jesus says many is going to come in his name. There's also the revelation gifts. And these are the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits. It's important to us as believers that we familiarize ourselves with these gifts and the, the Holy Spirit. And the revelation will transform our lives in so many different ways. It will eliminate or help to eliminate the isms and the schisms that's amongst us. It will help. The Bible says God says his people, his people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. It will allow us to increase in the knowledge of the things of God. Stop eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was where the original sin came from. Eat from the tree of life. Which is Jesus Christ. We're in an age where knowledge is increasing. Not all knowledge is for your edification. Not all knowledge is for your growth and for your development. Some knowledge is to make you conform. When I was younger and so, some of your ages, we had the telephone that had the zero down here. And if you wanted to press zero, you had to go right, right the rear row and bring it back. For some of you, it's an antique. It maybe should be in a museum. But you know the difference? I remember the number I was calling. I had all the numbers in my head. Now, I don't even know my whole number. Because I have something that remembers for me. You know what, where that is programming us to go? We don't think. Everything it tells you to do, you just do. Press this button. Press that button. Walk here. Do that. Put on this. Eat that. The air not good for you to breathe? The water not good for you to drink. So what are you supposed to do? The air is not good for you to breathe. My grandmother would have dead again if she wasn't dead already to find out that we are buying water. Water, you know, water. We don't, buy, we don't drink the water in the tap anymore. We buy it now. Can you see? I'm not trying to get anyone paranoid. I'm just saying, don't go on automatic pilot for the enemy. <sighs> Questions that are asked. Where did these gifts come from? Well, they come from the spirit of almighty God. They're called spiritual gifts. If you are not spiritual, you cannot operate in these gifts because you're only spiritual when you become born again. When you become born again, your spirit man is born again by the Holy Spirit. No man can come to the Father 
And so you cannot exercise a spiritual gift if you're not born again. If you're exercising a gift that looks spiritual, it is not from God. It is not from the Holy Spirit. Another spirit, but not the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter and the spirit of truth that leads us into all truth. So the spiritual gifts is from, you have gifts and talents, natural talents. These you don't need to be born again. You're talented, you can sing, you can dance, you're creative, uh, whatever your gifting is, whatever your natural talents are. I'm not talking about that. Every one of us, again, was given natural giftings from God. You don't need to be born again to use those. And as a matter of fact, the world is full of talented people. And some people are so talented, they don't want to know God. They can survive on their gift and their talents. Hollywood is a prime example. Michael Jackson was a very gifted and talented. He invested in his gift. He delighted the world. But I, I don't see anything written about anyone being saved at any of Michael Jackson's concerts. They're wowed by his, wooed by his dancing and his singing. But nobody's life was changed. Nobody was transformed. The kingdom was not advanced. But he was an exceptionally talented gift to the world. So I'm not talking about natural talents or natural gifts, which are given for us to enjoy, for us to enjoy life. The kingdom is advanced through the Holy Spirit operating through us with the divine gifts that God has given each and every one of us. I'm closing. <laughs> Matthew, we have to be careful. I spoke about submission earlier and I'm closing with this. Submit your gifts and your talent, natural and spiritual, back to the Lord. Because there is a danger that when we see the gifts, we think it's God. And if we're not in right alignment with God, we will do things and still be out of the will of God. Matthew 7, 21, Jesus said, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord. Verse 15, if you back up, tells us, beware of false prophets, a gift. Beware of this gift false prophets false prophets are not false people you can't see an individual come in here and you can say there is a false prophet a false prophet can give you a true word so sometimes because you get a true word you think it's god the enemy is the father of lies verse 16 and verse 20 tells us to know them by their fruit so discover your gift, but please develop your fruit. You will know them by their fruit. If you go down to read in 22, you will see that those who were seeking access were doing so based on their gifts. When they say, Lord, Lord, they said, did we not prophesy in your name? So they're saying, yes, we prophesied. And we used your name. Did we not cast out devils in your name? They're saying, yes, we used our gifts. And we even add your name to it to make it look good. These are sign gifts. This is the age we're in. We're living in the day where there's a frenzy around the prophetic, the sign gifts. We have to be careful because Jesus says, I never knew you. I never knew you. The prophetic is going to be dominant in these last days. Joel 2 tells us that. So if we're not synchronized with heaven, if we're not grounded in the things of God, grounded by the word of God, the gifts will be exercised and you can find yourself prophesying in the name and casting out devils in the name. But you know what the word says? He's exalted his word above his name. 
And if you don't know the word, you will go by the name and still be cast into hell. Joel chapter 2 says, he'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters will prophesy. So we're in the age. That's why we're seeing. And the enemy has got his counterfeits. To every single one of these gifts, there is a counterfeit in the enemy's camp. However, James 1 tells us, verse 17, every good and perfect gift come from the Father of lights from which there is no variation or shadow of turning. I could only touch on this subject, but I wanted first of all to let you know that you're fearfully and you're wonderfully made. You're handcrafted. Your name is written in the book. Your name is written in the palm of his hand. He loves you with an everlasting love. Young people, the reason why the enemy has launched such an attack on you is because there is so much that God has invested in you as the end time army, the end time men and women of God. We see it throughout scripture. I believe that the earth, there is a spiritual, this is my, I will say, I believe there is a spiritual significance in the spiritual realm when an individual of significance is birthed. I say that because when Jesus was born, there was a death warrant released on every child. I see what's going on and the gun crime and all of that. I see that as a death warrant by the enemy because of who this generation is. Because the, the earth is groaning, waiting for the manifestations of who? The sons of God. He doesn't call you strangers. He calls you sons, male and female. There's much that God is going to use you to do that eyes have not seen and ear have not heard. And some of you, the reason why you're going through things that your great-grandparents wouldn't even dream of is because, you know, witches say that there is a difference when they look at a Christian, they can see a difference. There is a significance in the spiritual realm. You don't see it because you're just seeing your brokenness. You don't see it because you're just seeing the pain. You don't see it because you're thinking of all the mess and how is it going to work out? But I'm here to tell you that he has given his angels charge over you. That the Lord knows the way that you take. Some of you are like David. Because of your gift, Saul is mad. Saul has seek to throw a javelin. But you've behaved yourself wisely. And you will take territories. And you will reach to the heights that God has decreed for you. I want to encourage you men, mighty men of God. Mighty men of God. Virtuous women of God. To continue to fight the fight of faith. To use the prophetic word, that's what Paul said to Timothy. Use the prophecies that's been prophesied over you to wage a good warfare. You know what that means? Decree the word of God over your life. Every morning you get up, I shall not die, but I shall live to declare. I'm going to hand over to Brother Seth, but I would like to finish off in prayer, if that okay? Could you stand? I see spiritual giants who see themselves as grasshoppers. Don't recognize that you've been mandated to go into the promise. 
don't recognize that there are certain that there is a teaching I've been looking at and it's quite interesting talking about mountains and the Bible symbolically calls uh, individual mountains and that's the, the highest peak and the highest office and there's certain mountains that uh, the society has been sort of divided into seven mountains and uh, there is some research that's talking about these various mountains that the body of Christ has to take the mountain of education, the mountain of politics, the mountain of medicine. And I see you earmarked, mandated, anointed, and appointed to take mountains, to take these territories for God. And so you might feel that you're in the desert right now, fighting your bears and your lions. But that's equipping you for the Goliath that will stand before you and dare to defy the covenant that you have with God. And so I want to encourage you, hold hands with each other. I want to encourage you. Warriors for Christ. Demon busting. Devil trampling. Warriors for Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I come before you. Lord, you know what you've invested in every single vessel that's here. You know what every single individual has gone through to even be here today. Father God, you know who you've called for the fivefold leadership. You know who you've called, Father God, with all the gifting that you have put in your word. I pray, Father God, that every barrier will be broken. Father, your word says that every handwriting of ordinance that was held against them, everything that their foreparents did, Everything, Father God, that their father and mother, grandparents have done, that the enemy would seek to come through that door. We place the blood of Jesus Christ over that door and we say access denied. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we say to every, Father God, Pharaoh, to every pilot, that would seek to imprison the spirit of your sons and daughters. I decree as suddenly in the name of Jesus. That there will be an angelic visitation that will shake the prison doors. And everything will open of its own accord. Father God let shackles be broken. Release every mind. That's been held captive by the enemy. Satan the Lord God rebuke you in Jesus name. I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To drop your weapons and flee. These are hand picked. Hand picked. Plucked. Hand picked. Plucked. Handpicked, plucked. Father God, I pray that you will enable your sons and daughters to be armed in the armor of God. That they're covered with the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, that their loins are girded with truth, that their feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That they have the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart of doubt, denial, and deceit from the wicked one. That they will use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Cutting everything that comes in their way. As they walk through the open doors that you've opened this weekend. The doors to go back and study. The doors of business, 
the doors of ministry the doors father god for entrepreneur the doors of missions the doors father god of restoration of family relationships the doors of forgiveness father let every mind be free i bless you and i honor you seal them for your glory i pray having this seal the lord knows those that are his in jesus name amen god bless you god bless you